In last week's episode, I spoke about the freezing of the inheritance tax allowance. And in this episode, I want to speak about another allowance, which is also going to be frozen until 2026. And that is the pension lifetime allowance. So let's understand what this means to us. And if there is such thing as too much money in your pension pot, I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. Pow. So what is the pension lifetime allowance? It is the maximum amount of money that you can hold within your private pension. Any money that goes beyond that amount is subject to a very, very hefty tax bill. So a private pension, as we all know, is a great vehicle for saving for your retirement. You can get a personal pension like a SIP or most typically what most of us will have is a pension through our workplace. Now there are two types of workplace pensions. One of those is the defined benefit scheme or what is also known as the final salary scheme. Now these are considered the old way of doing pensions and this gives you a final salary for life. Now they are quite a rare find but they can still be found particularly if you are working for the NHS. The other scheme is known as the defined contribution scheme which is more common these days. This sees yourself and employer chip in money to a pension pot and this pot will be then be used to finance your retirement. By law if you are enrolled in the scheme you will have to contribute at least 5% of your salary every month with your employer at least contributing 3%. Now you get great tax relief every time you contribute towards your private pension which makes it one of the best ways of growing your wealth for the long term. However as I already mentioned there is a limit to how much you can put in your private pension and this is known as the pension lifetime allowance and as it stands the value of the allowance is at £1,073,100. Now this allowance has been frozen for the next five years until 2026 following on from the budget announcement in March. Otherwise, as you can see from here, we would expect this allowance to grow on year on year to account for the rising cost of living. So a quick note on how this allowance is measured against the two workplace pensions. So if you are on the defined contribution scheme, that is very easy. The allowance is measured on the value of your pension pot. For those that are on the defined benefit scheme, this is a bit more complicated. This is usually 20 times the amount of your pension after your first year, plus any lump sum amounts. Um, I would suggest you reaching out to your pension provider to find out what exactly this number is estimated to be. Now, if you do go above this allowance threshold, you will be taxed quite harshly. And there are two different ways of being taxed depending on how you take out this money. One, if you take it out as a lump sum, you'll be charged a rate of 55%. Two, if you take it out as part of an income, you will be charged 25%. Let me put this into example. Say we have a pension pot that is worth two million pounds. The first 1,073,100 will not be subject to this additional tax. However, the tax is applied to the remaining 926,900 pounds. So if you took this money out as a lump sum, you'll be charged at a rate of 55%, which means the additional rate will cost you 509,795 pounds. Or if you did a drawdown or bought some kind of annuity, you'll be taxed at the 25% rate, and this will come at a cost of 231,725. Do remember income tax is applied on top of this. So I know what you're thinking, getting over one million pounds to your pension pot, psh, that ain't gonna happen, that is too much money. However, I do think people underestimate the power of compounding over such a long amount of time, and this figure isn't actually that unachievable as you may think. Particularly with this allowance being frozen for the next five years, and it's not going to be growing at the same rate of inflation, this allowance does require a closer look because the value of our money does tend to depreciate over time. The same one million pounds today is going to be a lot less money in the future. I'm gonna go through an example and I'm gonna use what the average salary is as stated by the Office of National Statistics. Now the latest report says that the UK in 2020 had an average salary of 586 pounds per week. If I times that by 52, we get an annual average salary of 
30,472. So to avoid overcomplicating things, I have simplified it slightly by making some assumptions. The first one being that the person started working full time from the age of 23. Um, they have been involved in a defined contribution scheme and they have maintained the same salary throughout their working life. And the salary is the same as the average I mentioned earlier, which is 30,472. And the contribution that they are making to their pension is at 8%. 5% from themselves, 3% from the employer. So this is just the minimum required by law and the rate of return has been constant throughout this pension life cycle. So as you can see from this diagram, I have broken it down further by giving us a few scenarios. One of them is by the target retirement age. I've added in 55 and 57, which is the current and what will be the new uh, age at which you can first access your private pension. I have also put in 65 and 68 in case you wanted to take this out in line with your state pension age. Now, typically when it comes to long-term growth, the number that is usually spouted around is between eight and 10%. However, I've also given a more reserved uh, return of 6% which some also argue is a more realistic um, rate of return for the long term. Now, as you can see, if we look at the 6% mark, our value of our pension pot hovers between 220,000 and just over 500,000, which is a fair bit off the mark from the lifetime allowance threshold of 1,073,000 pounds. Um, so we probably don't have to worry about it too much if we achieve this. Now, it gets a bit more interesting if we look at an average rate of return of 8%. If I took out my pension at the age of 65 or 68, you can see I'm actually very, very close to the allowance allowance threshold. So it's not as difficult as one might think. If I do actually get a return of 10%, you'll see with ages 65 and 68, I actually surpass the allowance threshold. And remember, I have actually based this on averages. So if a person um, who manages to get a return of eight to 10% or even more, they are at risk of surpassing the lifetime allowance by earning the average salary and just by contributing the minimum requirement as per the law. So as you can see, if you are someone that is earning on this average or even above it, it might actually be worth checking in to see if you are at risk of surpassing this lifetime allowance threshold. By the way, if you are enjoying this video, please be sure to like, comment and subscribe with the notification bell on. I release a video every single week talking about all things personal finance with the ultimate aim of helping you be better with your money. So the best way to avoid surpassing this threshold is to check in with your pension on a regular basis and to measure if you are at risk of breaching this allowance threshold. You can do this by projecting the value of your pension at retirement age. Um, I used a simple compound interest calculator to get these values and you can do the same. Otherwise, I'll put a link in the description box down below to one or two links that have calculators that are specifically designed to estimate your pension pot, but please do check their assumptions as well as they will have them in their calculations. Now, if you are at risk of breaching the lifetime allowance, it might be worth thinking up and switching tactics. It may be worth considering reducing your own contributions to your pension and instead use that money and put it within an ISA account, or more specifically, an investment ISA or a lifetime ISA account. ISAs allow you to invest your money within the market and any returns that you get from your investments will not be subject to any tax whatsoever. You're allowed to put 20,000 pounds every tax year into an ISA account. This is 4,000 pounds for a lifetime ISA. Um, but with a lifetime ISA as well, you get a 25% top up from the government. So if you do happen to max out to 4,000, the government will put in an extra 1,000 pounds or 25% as a bonus. I have done videos on ISA accounts in the past, so do check them out if you want more information on those. Another thing you may want to consider is retiring earlier than you initially planned. If you were someone that was considering retiring towards your state pension age, I've shown in my example, if you retire around about the ages of 55, 57, which will be the earliest that you can access your private pension pot, the money in these pots will have less time to grow and are less likely to reach the threshold mark. Now, contrary to how this video may have sounded, the purpose of this video isn't to scaremonger you out of contributing to your pension or 
contributing more to your pension. Uh, pensions are a great way of saving for your retirement. However, I just want to bring this to your attention because I don't think a lot of people are talking about the pension lifetime allowance. And I don't think it's a concept many people even know about that you can be subject to such a hefty tax bill if you contribute too much to your pension. Now, with that being said, there are cases where even if you surpass the lifetime allowance threshold, this isn't always such a bad thing. One example could be for those that are on a workplace pension, more specifically those that are on the defined contribution scheme. It is very common for employers to do matching schemes with their pension benefits. So if I upped my contributions to 8%, your employer will also up their contributions to 8% as well. So if you do decide to reduce your contributions because you are in fear of reaching that lifetime allowance, your employer will also do so as well, which might not actually work better for you. Even if you do surpass that threshold, the fact that you have more money working for you in your pension pot because of the extra free cash that you are getting from your employer the effects of compounding will be far greater, which will see the growth of your pension pot grow a lot faster than if you didn't have that cash from your employer. So even if you are then hit with a 55% tax bill or 25% for that matter, it may be the case that you are still better off than if you decided to reduce your contributions because you were in fear of breaching your lifetime allowance. Of course, that is it. That is pension lifetime allowances explained. And hopefully now you understand why it is so important to monitor your private pension growth, particularly as this allowance will be frozen until 2026. Because remember, there is usually a steady increase in prices. This is what is known as inflation. And the same one million pounds today is likely to be worth a lot less in five years time. So it is really, really important that we stay on top of this and we don't get caught out because I've shown even with averages, it can be quite easy to do so. And as always, if you did enjoy my video, please be sure to smash that like button. That does wonders for the YouTube algorithm as I am a very small YouTuber. This allows my content to get exposed to more and more people and the more and more people I can help as well. And remember, I release a video every single week. So if you want to keep up to date with those as well, hit the subscribe button too. See you later. Bye.